Hello and welcome to MTM Vegas. We're going to go around Las Vegas to the best dive bars. Plus, I'll detail my Nomad Las Vegas stay. It was surprisingly good. And the roller coaster at New York, New York is back. I was there on opening day to tell you what the difference is. Plus, I got a sneak peek at the old trains as well. All of that coming up right now. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe. Let's hit it. So Mark, uh, I stayed at Nomad a couple days ago and I just couldn't wait to tell you that Nomad is what Cromwell's trying to be. Cromwell is like an imitation Nomad, even though it was built before that. I mean, it's just everything that you want Cromwell to be uh, Nomad. You is. mean everything Cromwell is because Cromwell's the best, <laughs> but <laughs> not quite. No, I mean, when we walked through uh, the Nomad, like the lobby and stuff, it looked it looked awesome. It, I mean, it does look more masculine than than most hotels you'll see these days like the leather the dark the dark colors yeah. and and all that so it just looks like a like a country club and in the back room before you get to the locker room there's this little smoking room with a bar like that's <laughs> the feel you get like high high end uh people just sitting there drinking and smoking cigars so it looked beautiful and i was uh, i'm looking forward to seeing the video uh when you put it together because i can't wait to see what the rooms look like yeah, you should. You feel like you should see Hugh Hefner sitting on the, the couch there with his smoking jacket. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but, but yeah, it was really nice. And I actually arrived and uh, Nomad has its own private entrance on the outside if you drive up and get dropped off. So I parked in the garage and then I walked outside so that I could actually film walking in the entrance. And the doorman took the door and like check-in experience was amazing, even though there was nobody in there, nobody checking in at all. In fact, when I arrived, there was nobody checking in at the Park MGM lobby or the Nomad lobby. And this was a Saturday night at like two o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday. So I was like, wow, it's that's kind of bizarre. Slow. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really slow. But what I love about Nomad is that it does have its own lobby, like you said, and it's completely sort of insulated from the rest of Park MGM. So you have a separate check in lobby, there's seating areas, and then you have that separate bar. And then there's even a Nomad Casino, which kind of buffers in between the Park MGM casino. So you could really sort of live in that area and not be exposed to the casino. And then they they, they integrated it just really well. Um, I booked with American Express Fine Hotels and Resorts, which is my, my favorite go-to, especially uh, with hotels like that. And uh, they treated me really well there, gave me an upgrade to a suite and uh, came with $160 in credit, 60 for breakfast, $100 dining credit. And it was the rate was 126. Did bucks. they just have a fast food burger <laughs> place open for your credit or what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they didn't give me the Rio treatment. Thankfully, just uh, like when I stayed at Delano, they uh, allowed me to use it at any MGM property. So we actually were we were eating keto right now. So we went to Nine Fine Irishmen and had like a wedge salad and a steak, and it was really good. And then the breakfast at Primrose, which is the main restaurant in Park MGM, was very, very good as well. So food was impressive, but we could have gone to any outlet. So we could have gone to some of the nicer restaurants in Aria or really anywhere uh, with that credit, which which was nice. But yeah, the room uh, reminded me kind of of those like Thompson. We, we know we're Hyatt nerds, Thompson kind of hip kind of style rooms. Um, you know, like you mentioned Guild Hall in New York kind of like that, but probably nicer. And I so remember more like the maybe like the Beekman in New York, then like the, yeah. the other one that's downtown, that type yeah. of vibe. Yeah. And like the uh, I also the the Hyatt on Bowery that I stayed at last year, just very modern and hip, but just, you know, probably a little bit more masculine, like you said, but really nice hardwood floors, really high end linens, beds was comfortable, like no complaints at all about this room. Uh, it felt luxury. And you know, I'm about to do a, a video soon about the top luxury hotels in Vegas. I only have the four seasons left to stay at now. And I was surprised at how high I think Nomad ranks uh, compared to some of the other ones. I wasn't expecting it. I was probably expecting it to be right at towards the bottom, but I think they really outperformed and the service was was great. Just the so check-in experience. Like Cromwell <laughs> and then, then Nomad. I don't even think Cromwell's on the list. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think there's any Caesars Entertainment properties on the list, honestly. No, I mean, it doesn't surprise me, really. Um, I, I mean, Nobu, they're, they're I, actually, like Nobu would be on the list. Nobu would be on the list, but I think you you know that that would probably be... I'd probably put Nobu below Nomad, and I will have to decide. It's going to be kind of a, an argument, an internal argument with myself between Delano and Nomad, 
because they sort of serve the same purpose for what they're doing. Delano, I think, probably has the better standard rooms with the suites, but of course, Nomad has a better location and, uh, you know, recently renovated and stuff. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. I still wouldn't put it up there with Cosmo or Wynn, but it definitely is, or even Waldorf Astoria probably, but it's definitely in the discussion and it's a really nice place to stay. The rooms were great. So uh, I'm excited uh, to share that. And it was exciting to have a nice stay. And I have to say just, I did all those Caesars Entertainment stays over the summer and into the fall. And now I'm on my third uh, MGM Resort stay, M Life stay. And man, it's the, the hotels just seem to be a little bit better on the MGM side for sure. Yeah, and I think you can see that just walking through the casinos, the the finishes they have, the the open area, you know, the the main gaming floors, the the restaurants, everything is just kind of like a step up from Caesars. I do feel like Caesars rewards gamble, gamblers a little bit better, uh, at least in my experience, because I started gambling at MGM, and I wouldn't really get a whole lot. And then when I switched over to Caesars, I was getting a ton of stuff. Now, not so much. Like over the years, it's gotten less and less, so maybe they're more even than they used to be. Uh, it's something that I would have to check out, you know, maybe go back to MGM for a little bit and see how they how they treat me. But it's definitely noticeable. And then the the uh, Irishman place in the New York, New York, I've, I've actually been wanting to check that out for a while because it's always in the My Vegas, which I'm sure a lot of people watching this play those slot games on uh, the Facebook. And it's always one of the ones that pops up like half off a hundred dollar dinner and stuff, but it sells out so quickly I never grabbed it. But that's always one that I would look for whenever I am cashing in chips. Yeah, the food there was surprisingly good, like the steak. I, it was kind of strange because like they, they served it up steakhouse style where the steak is separate from the sides, which is fine, but it probably not something you would expect at a pub, maybe. But uh, the steak was really good quality and it tasted really good. And uh, we weren't really interested in the sides anyway. So it kind of worked out good. Definitely overpriced, but we had the credit. So uh, it worked out. But yeah, in a really good atmosphere, really cool things going on, and uh, everything was distanced nicely, so no no complaints there. But I, I really the, like. What okay. was the total price for the stay? So for the the stay was one hundred and twenty six dollars for the room rate, plus uh, the resort fee, and uh, and tax. So it came to just shy of two hundred dollars out the door, and uh, came with the one hundred and sixty dollar in credit, and then uh, of course I got the suite, which the I booked the regular room. The $126 was their cheapest room. The suite was selling for $250 plus per night. And of course, that's not guaranteed with American Express, fine hotels and resorts, but you do get an upgrade. So I was expecting like a good view. And uh, they gave me the suite instead, which was great. And the and the suite actually had a stunning view of uh, T-Mobile Arena with the uh, Allegiant Stadium off in the background. And so I didn't look at the strip side, but the views were really great. And I got to see the uh, roller coaster at New York, New York too. And that was running for the first time again this weekend. So that was, uh, that was fun. And uh, were you jealous? Did you see, uh, did you see the new trains? I know you're not nerdy about roller coasters, but <laughs> I'm just wondering, <laughs> was it still like this the whole time? No, I mean, uh, so these new trains have shock absorbers and what a difference that makes. I mean, this, there are, you can still feel the moments where it would have beat you up previously, but because the train handles it so well, you don't feel that and it just sort of glides along the ride for most of it. And yeah, it's just a whole different experience. You got off and I was like, wow, that was pretty good and rode it a second time. And uh, I actually was there on Friday to ride it and then they wouldn't open it with the wind. It was a preview day for employees and I was invited by an employee uh, to check it out. But uh, then I was able to go back Saturday and, uh, and ride it and get a few pictures. And Mark, you don't know what I had to go through just to get pictures of this thing because for some reason, MGM doesn't want pictures or videos in the station and they make everybody like leave their loose items in lockers and stuff. Yeah, I, I was man. I managed to get a few pictures before they yelled at me. Do you have your uh, button cam like your James Bond stuff? Or? Yeah, I wish. <laughs> well, I, all I know, I was warned, like, don't take video. Uh, and of course, uh, I have friends there, so I didn't take video, but they uh, they did allow me just to snap a couple pictures of the train so I could share it with everybody. And it's just a much nicer train, much more modern technology. It doesn't have the hard over the shoulder restraints, but it has more of like a, a soft vest. And so you don't bang into that at all. And then, uh, like I said, the, the trains have shock absorbers. So this has gone to be a much better ride. Unfortunately, it is $19. So it's still uh, pretty expensive for anybody to ride. $14 if you're a local. And I believe re-rides are $10 if you decide you want to do it again. But 
uh, in the past, you would never want to do it again, right? You're banging your head, but now I think yeah. a lot of people. You always leave. You always leave with a migraine. <laughs> yeah, I, I think a lot of people could ride this 10, 15 times. You know, kids are hardcore people. I mean, it's still it's still not the best roller coaster if in the have, world. Just... If you have 150 bucks to blow, yes, then. Yeah. No, I think they have like an all day pass for like 50 bucks. Oh, okay. and, yeah, there so you go. At some point, you can uh, you can do it. Of course, the the first day there was like a two hour line because of social distancing, and they're. I was going to say how out. long how long. Uh, of a line was it with opening day and everything, but two hours. So it was about, basically it made you feel like you're back at Disney. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, yeah, it was crazy. It's like stretched all the way through there. And, uh, but everybody was, was excited to do it and they have more trains coming. So they'll be able to bring those lines down. And then obviously as they're able to change their standards, uh, they can do that as well. I also was able to check out the old trains, uh, which I was able to find in, a secret spot on property and it was fun to kind of compare the difference and get up close and get all nerdy and see underneath and all the wheel housings and everything else i'll include a little does, video here but does see secret spot mean behind a fence somewhere <laughs> no it's it's on new york new york property in a public area uh, but uh i'll let people they, they can check out my video here you could probably tell where it's at but i, I don't want to like point people exactly to the spot and they may not be there anymore because they're getting ready, of course, to scrap those trains and get rid of them. But uh, you can really see just uh, the difference in the size of the trains, how much bulkier the old ones are compared to the new ones, and just technology has progressed. But uh, as a coaster enthusiast, I know a lot of people out there maybe not care, but it's good to have a nice coaster back in my hometown. And uh, I'm excited about it. Something I'll actually ride because I had gone like 10 years without riding it uh, before a couple months ago. And I don't see that happening again. What do you like better, the the coaster there at the New York, New York, or the one inside of Circus Circus going through the mountain or whatever? What was that called? Canyon Blaster uh, at Circus Circus. I still think is a better coaster. It's it's fast. It's held up really well. It's sort of a classic. So I do like that. Although at nighttime, the New York, New York coaster out on the strip when it's kind of cold outside, that's one of my favorite coaster experiences anywhere. It used to be that you got banged up, so you had to ignore how you felt on the ride. Now you'll be able to actually enjoy it, enjoy the views, and it won't be uh, such, a, such a negative experience. So it's, I think, definitely worth a shot for anybody who likes coasters. Nice. Maybe when it's not two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully uh, soon. <laughs> now, the next story is we're going to follow up on something we had talked about before. Of course, in our videos, uh, we talked about El Dorado Casino, which is in downtown Henderson, and it's still one of the closed casinos, although Boyd Gaming, who had owned it, Dating back all the way to the 1960s, the Boyd brothers, it was their first real project in downtown Henderson. So tons of history there. But Boyd Gaming sold the property to Disimone Gaming, who owns the Railroad Pass Casino. And they've now uh, announced the new name for it. And what do you think the new name for El Dorado Casino is going to be, Mark? I don't even know. Like, what would be a cool name for the downtown? <laughs> well, the one, the, one out in, uh, the one out in the Railroad Pass is, is his other casino. So the one in downtown Henderson, if you, just, if you had one name Railroad Pass, what would you name the second one? Just, just Railroad pass. Stop. I don't know. No, <laughs> it's called the Pass. <laughs> so, yeah, it's going to be just the Pass in downtown Henderson. I don't know if that's, gonna... that's not such a great name. Like, oh, just give it a pass. Like, <laughs> <laughs> He's like I don't I know the branding on that so, so thought, thought out so well, but okay. Now, according to uh, Vegas Eater, uh, they plan a modern Art Deco palette, including an attractive satin finish with blue, bronze, and white color scheme. And they are going to restore the neon star that looms over the front entrance and install a new sign. So it, it kind of sounds I, like circuit colors, doesn't it? Yeah, it definitely feels much more modern with the blue and the bronze and white. Yeah, bring new life into that area. And there are two other casinos right next to there. So I uh, should hopefully get some. Yes, one, one that I mistaken uh, <laughs> for a strip club. So <laughs> yeah, the Rainbow Club. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I was looking, you know, before the show, I was kind of I don't know the area that well. I've never been downtown Henderson. So I was just kind of like doing street views and stuff. And right next to it is <laughs> it looks the awning. It looks just like a strip club. And I'm like, oh, this is a strip club right next to a casino. That's kind of a good spot. And then I click on it and it's no, it's a it's a little casino. <laughs> So, Sorry to burst surprised. your bubble there, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you know, on strip, you got strip clubs, tons of those in Vegas. You also have dive bars. And uh, I thought this cool uh, comparison that uh, Vegas Eater had put up 15 dive bars you should visit, 15 best dive bars in Las Vegas. And 
Uh, that kind of makes me think we should do uh, like five best dive strip clubs now. Combine the two. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's there yeah, there's a lot of those around uh, around the city for sure. <laughs> Uh, but so, that, yeah, I mean, did any of these stand out to you? I know your your beloved stage door was on there, which we've talked about on the show before. Yeah. And that's the closest one to the strip, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Right off the strip uh, by hole, the Batista's hole in the wall. And that was one I was really excited about. It's it's the one on the list that I've been to. And, you know, for a couple trips, I had been wanting to go there, which whatever things happen and you, you don't go where you're expecting to go. And finally, we were staying at the Flamingo, and it's right around the corner from there. And I'm like, we're definitely going to go. We have to go. They have cheap beers, like $2 beers. They have like a, a PBR and a hot dog deal for like 4 bucks or something crazy like that. So I'm like, let's go check it out. And it's attached to like a party store. We walk in through the party store, and it smells like an ashtray, like really bad. And that's before you even get to the bar. And you get to the bar, it's even worse. And I grew up with two smoking parents. And I couldn't really handle it for more than a minute or two. You know, my wife didn't grow up around smoking. So she was like, hey, I'll, I'll wait outside. You go do your thing. So I walked in and it's just no air filtration. I don't mind smoking. It doesn't usually bother me. But this smells like somebody put out 10,000 cigarettes and left them there for like 14 years. And that's the smell you get. <laughs> that sounds like a true dive bar. And it definitely belongs <laughs> on this list. Some other ones like the Huntridge Tavern. The Huntridge is an old historic theater uh, in Las Vegas, and that's in the same area there. I'd never been there, but I went to their website, and the Huntridge Tavern definitely looks like a dive bar. You know, when you, when you see the pictures, you can like you're like that's it. And then the other one I that stood out, I think, to both of us was Frankie's Tiki Room, which I know has become very famous with tourists uh, lately, and it's a pretty small bar, but it looks like just such a cool tiki bar. I mean, it's not really divey in that way, but it, it looks like uh, I know it's on both of our lists to visit. Yeah, it's actually been on my list for four or five years, but it's kind of, it's not really near anything else. You know, you can kind of hit it on the way down to Fremont if you're going downtown. And I've been wanting to go because I, I love dive bars. So I'm kind of ashamed that I've only been to I've been to one uh, on this list. But so it's one that I'd searched like best dive bars in Vegas years ago. And I've always wanted to go. It looks super cool inside. Super cool vibe. I guess the drinks are really good, and I just haven't made it there. But this list kind of maybe the February trip I'll go and then have a report back for for the, that episode when I get home. There you go. Yeah, definitely because it, it looks so cool. And let us know in the comments what your favorite dive bar is in Las Vegas, and we'll put a link to this article so you can see all fifteen of them. And the last uh, story comes from Vital Vegas, and I think that you're really gonna like this because I know you stay at a lot of Caesar's Rewards properties. Uh, they basically are helping drunk guests find their room with a new feature in their app where you can put your room number in and it will direct you from the front desk of a property to where the room is. I'm, uh, I'm uh, not ashamed to say that I could have used that once or twice in the past. It's a little <laughs> Although, weird like, though. Although like you're, when you're that drunk, can you really uh, function and pull up an app and follow the directions? I don't know. I, I just randomly bang around and ask people, do you know where the spa towers are? Or do you know? <laughs> well, it's true because... <laughs> I think the directions are only from the front desk of your resort. So then you gotta, you're drunk, you gotta get to the front desk, and then at which point you gotta, gotta do that. I think it's a good idea. It's just there's no automation. It doesn't know what room you're in, so you gotta randomly, you know, you gotta actually put your room. That's another thing that you probably don't want to do really well when you're drunk. Uh, but it would be cool if, like, if it knew your room number and where you stayed, and no matter where you were, you just hit a button and it gave you directions back to your hotel and then back to your room. That's what it should do. Yeah. And I think like Caesar's Palace is probably the most difficult to navigate for me of all, especially all the Caesar's properties, but of most of Vegas, just because it's been like small addition after small addition over the years. So it's all these weird circles kind of connected in a weird way. So I've stayed there multiple times and I still can't quite navigate all the twists and turns. So I think it will be useful for places like that. You know, pro tip, if you are going to go out for a night and, and have some fun and you don't want to keep your key cards in the key sleeve that has the room number because that's easy. If somebody picks them up, they know where to go. Take a picture of your hotel room number on your phone. So when you're later at night and you're like, oh, what was my room number? You just pull up your old pictures and there you go. It's right there. That reminded me of one thing about Nomad, Mark. The, the key holders are made of velvet, of red velvet. Okay, that's the coolest thing ever that 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 they had me right there. They won me over with that. 
All right, that's going to do it for this week. If you like the video, don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you like uh, hearing our voices, check out our weekly Miles Points travel podcast at mtmpodcast.com. We have about 50 articles a week, travel, finance, credit cards at milestomemories.com and uh, Vegas YouTube videos here every single week. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Thank you.